morning. It's uh, it's early on a Saturday morning. I'm at my Saturday job. It's a uh, it's a small development we're doing. Um, guys aren't here yet. The uh, the blocks behind me. <laughs> I didn't put them up, but I kind of I organised to put them up. So that's my Saturday job. I've always felt that uh, well, I've had a Saturday job since I was thirteen, and um, I think I I feel like I work hard, but in a particular kind of way, you know. Um, my, my granddad tells a story of my not even story, he just, just tells the truth. Um, yeah, having breakfast at nine o'clock uh, every day because he'd been in the fields for four hours before that, you know. So, um, yeah, we work we work hard in a funny kind of way. And I've just always thought that um, waking up on a Saturday morning to do something uh, yeah, extra over and above the job. Um, so it's always property related. It's always, yeah, gets your head a little bit as well. And uh, even if we don't need to be ahead anymore, then it's always still good to be ahead, isn't it? So I like it, I enjoyed it. Uh, and that's what we're doing here today. Uh, interesting, I suppose, uh, coming on to, I've got a question today, and the question is, should you buy in a limited company or a personal name? Um, and yeah, I suppose, knowing that my Saturday job has always made enough money to live on. Um, so the answer to the question, you know, limited company or personal, is it's always all personal circumstances. And um, my personal circumstances, we're a, we're a high growth property business. We're still we're still growing. I'm leveraged. Uh, I get mortgages, and once we've done the work, I would then remortgage them. I'm not aggressively leveraged. You know, we go at sort of under six, under seventy percent loan to value at the moment. Um, and I might go for a second bite of the cherry in sort of five years time sort of thing. So not really aggressively leveraged, but nonetheless leveraged. Um, yeah, and that definitely feeds into, into the answer. So the question was, should you buy in a limited company on your personal name? Uh, the background behind this, of course, is um, the Section 24 tax. And essentially means that landlords are taxed on turnover, in effect. Uh, you are unable to um, offset the interest on any mortgage you have against the profit and loss, which is, um, well, no matter what you think about that, it's the fact and it's the law. Um, so one of the ways that, probably the only way, um, that uh, most people can access to to get around that, and it's not a void or evade or anything, it's just, just we'll come on to the whys and wherefores, it's to buy property in a limited company you can then offset the interest, of course, like any normal business. And it does lead to the question, you know, why and how in, in your own personal name, but that, that's a different thing. So, um, Everyone's different, but like I say, I'm leveraged. I'm still growing. I don't need to take any money out of the property business. I've never taken any money out of my property business. Um, so yeah, that's why it's growing so quick. And um, that's, that's, that's my choice. But that is a particular choice, isn't it? And one thing I don't want anybody to do is listen to this guy on YouTube and take that as their their uh, their advice. I'm not giving you any advice. My advice is to go speak to a good accountant who understands it. And we'll talk about what a good accountant is later on in a minute as well. Um, I asked my accountant uh, probably five, six years ago now, whenever it was, what should we do? What should I do? Um, now, the nice thing about my accountant is he looked... He looks after people who are richer than I am, and that's always a nice thing. Um, I know that they'll be asking the questions harder and stronger than, than I would be, and he's very motivated to get the right answer. And back then, his answer was, we're doing nothing right now. We won't be an early adopter. We will see what happens. We've got time to plan it, and the rules tapered in. Uh, and I asked him that question every year since. And for the last two years, three years maybe, um, the answer has been, we should buy a limited company. I was not just saying, what should I do? And the choice for me was, we move to a limited company. I'll talk about that in a minute as well. Um, but it was, what should I tell my clients that haven't bought any properties yet at all? Should they be buying a limited company? And his answer was, almost certainly, probably yes. You know, double, triple caveats. Um, so, yeah, you could be the one or two percent that it isn't applicable to. You've got to get good financial advice to work this out. But it's very, very likely that you should be buying a limited company. And when you do, um, you will be taxed like any normal company would be taxed. Income, 
costs, that's your profit. And one of the costs would be the uh, the interest on your mortgage. Um, personally now, um, or the property business now, I pay less tax than I used to before Section 24. It's focused me on exactly what we needed to do and how we need to do it. And we spent some time working out the best ways to do it. So overall, it was, a little, it was an expensive process. It was a time consuming process, but overall it actually did us some good. Um, let's think about some of the potential issues down the track. And you know, when I speak to clients about that, there's a couple of questions. This is always a question on, on a discovery call. You know, limited company tax. Uh, and one of the questions is, What's potentially coming at me down the tracks if uh, I go limited company? First of all, um, I think there's a massive barrier to any big change to, to the taxation of um, property, um, residential property inside a limited company, simply because so many limited companies own resident, residential property, particularly pension companies, and they've been actively encouraged to do that. Um, I think there's probably something in there as well, you know. Um, I believe the reason that governments have wanted landlords almost to be penalised, um, but have then also left a route out for them to um, professionalise, uh, step up if you like, go the limited company route, put a little bit more effort in, um, was twofold. One, I'm, if you search the internet, you'll get slightly different figures all over the place, but really roughly between 20 and 30% of the UK's population rents. Really roughly 60, 65% of landlords only own one house. Those are landlords who aren't above the, haven't put their head above the parapet, might not be licensed. They might be, of course it might be. Um, might not be licensed, might not be doing things properly, um, might not be paying tax. Uh, and I think the government just wants to get everything out in the open and you know, th those people are their voters um, and also it's, you know, it's an absolute it's a safety concern isn't it it's people um, living in homes that, uh, that maybe are or aren't safe you know but, but are at least invisible once they're, once they're visible they can be regulated so I think no wonder that the government wants um, you know, the, the industry to professionalize and this is one way to do it also gets their tax Personally, I've loved it, you know, uh, and I think that landlords that say that um, they're they're not in favour and they don't they don't like the idea. Of course, it's extra work and effort, but um, if you've only got the ambition to have one or two properties, I think um, you, you you need to step up. You need to think I need more than this. Um, there's a there's a cost of running a limited company. There's a cost of doing a half decent job, and the break even point is not one, two or three properties. We need to be in it, we need to be doing more. If you've got that mindset, I have, I hope I'm speaking to somebody who's like that there, then you've got a plan to five, 10, 15 properties, whatever, whatever it is, you know, I'm not putting those words in your mouth, I'm just saying shape up and, and do something. If you've got that, then you're on the right side of this, aren't you? Um, all of those people who are wimping out and disappearing off and selling up the houses. I heard somebody the other day saying I'm I'm selling up because of selective licensing. That was that's another example. It's not tax, is it? But it's another example of you know increased legislation and red tape. Um, when I see selective licensing, that is a fee every every year or every five years. Or different council got different things to be a landlord. I'm all over it. We dive in. It means that, and I've never seen it not happen this way. We buy a house. All of the amateur landlords disappear. And all these rules are getting rid of the amateur landlords. The pros move in. They do a good job. House prices go up. Rents go up. Tenants are happier because they're living in a nicer area. You know, actually, if a tenant's got a choice between four, paying four fifty rent and five fifty rent, but the area is nicer, the house is nicer, they want to pay the five fifty rent and live in a nicer place. They want that option, uh, and we see that. You know, the, the 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 rougher areas, not as good demand. The nicer areas better demand so um last thing on on going limited then because you know, you, you i've said you've got to go get some advice and you do need to go get some advice um if at the in that process i've, I've heard lots of stories about lots of um this is i've been told this is possible i've been told this isn't possible a confusing picture and sometimes when you listen 
all of the th all of the things could be true. Um, however, if you're being told that uh, you have to pay capital gains tax, you have to pay stamp duty, or you have to remortgage your properties, um, they are big barriers to going from personal to limited. When you already own the property, I'm talking about owning a portfolio. I'm not talking about building a portfolio from scratch. That's that's pretty cut and dried. To get your advice. I think you find your, your advice is cut and dried there. However, when you're transferring a portfolio, if you've been told those three things, refinance, capital gains tax, stamp duty, um, get a second opinion. Perhaps book onto a discovery call. It's always a question. Tax, limited company, it's always a question. We won't answer it directly. We will signpost you to people. But I know that personally, I have managed to move my portfolio, substantial portfolio, from a private name to a limited company in a very stress-free way. It wasn't um, it wasn't free, you know, it took time, it took three years to do it, and it cost some money, but it was well, well worth it. Um, if you're building from scratch, you're at an advantage, aren't you? So, um, yeah, B perhaps book on a discovery call um, anyway, but definitely if you get in those as blocks. I don't know how to do this. This is looking like it's a good idea on paper, but I, I can't see how to do it. I can't find the right people to do it. Um, you, you'll need a team to around you to put put, uh, put that together. So for the landlords.com, that could be your team. Book on a discovery call. The guys are here. I know. I'm, I can just hear the van door going. So uh, I better um, got some materials to offload, some more blocks to put up, and we've got the windows to put in today. So be a fun Saturday. <laughs> it's probably a little insight into me. I enjoy doing this. Okay, have a good day.